Hello, I'm Judith Buchanan, Master of the College, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this online service of readings and carols from St Peter's College, Oxford. We are sad not to be able to light our candles progressively through the chapel, as we usually would at this time of year, watching the light spread from a single flame to candles throughout the choir and congregation. But we are very pleased to be able to welcome friends from near and far to join us in the service this year. Wherever you are joining us from, we welcome you. Since the start of the pandemic, our wonderful choir have not been able to sing together in shared space, as I know they are longing to do. However, they have been able to perform in virtual space, and it's of course multi-track recording that has made this possible. And the music in this service is assembled from a myriad of separate tracks, some 240 in all, recorded independently by each member of the choir, and then blended and balanced together through the technical expertise and dedicated commitment of our producer and alumnus, John Warner. And of course, the expertise and commitment of our choir and of the work in post-production is all held together through the work of our Director of Music, Professor Edward Higginbottom, who has done so much to train our choir with musical rigour and in doing so to lift the spirits of all of us across the last four terms and is now poised to hand on the baton to our new Director of Music who will be joining us in January. So as I hand you in now to our Chaplain, the Reverend Dr Elizabeth pitt Kethley, to our choir and our organ scholars and to other members of the college community, let me take the opportunity to thank Professor Higginbottom for all he has done with us in his time here. We have so much enjoyed his work and benefited from it too. And of course, to wish you all a very happy Christmas.
beloved in Christ, the seasons of Advent and Christmas bid us prepare for and celebrate Christ's first and second comings to our world. In sorrow and penitence we confess our failures and shortcomings and pray God to give us a new vision of his perfect kingdom, the end of all our strivings and the consummation of his eternal plan. In word and music we give voice in this service to the hope set forth in holy scriptures that God has come and will come again with prophets and sages of old and with the apostles, saints and martyrs of the church. We celebrate the coming of God's kingdom in the birth, life, death and resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. But first let us pray for those who by reason of adversity yearn especially for the kingdom's coming. The hungry, the homeless, the sick and the sorrowful, the lonely and unloved, those who sit in darkness of despair or who walk in the shadow of death. Let us pray for the leaders of the nations and for all who strive for justice, freedom and peace. Let us also pray for the church that it may bear faithful witness to this glorious hope in the world. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. So be it, Lord, to the end of the age. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together.
Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even for ever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God. The prophet Micah foretells the glory of little Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem, one of Ithratha, one of the little clans in Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is able to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord our God, and they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be one of peace. Thanks be to God.
the Advent Collect. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light now in the time of this mortal life in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to life immortal. Through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, now and forever. Amen.
angel Gabriel announces to the Virgin Mary that she is going to give birth to a son. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Hail, thou art that art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation there should be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary to the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. Just a man, and not wanting to make her a public example, 
was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be the child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her until she had brought forth her first newborn son. And they called his name Jesus. Thanks be to God. St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day 
in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. Thanks be to God. St. John unfolds the mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that has been made. 
In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light that lighteneth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become children of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Let us give thanks to Almighty God for the mystery of his love revealed in Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit through the same Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the same Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, God of our ancestors. To you be praise and glory forever. You called the patriarchs and prophets to live by the light of faith and to journey in the hope of your promised fulfilment. May we be obedient to your call and be ready and watchful to receive your Christ, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are our light and our salvation, O Lord our God. Amen. Amen. O thou who art love and who seest all suffering, injustice and misery in the world, look mercifully upon the poor, the oppressed and all who are heavy laden. Fill our hearts with compassion for those who suffer and hasten the coming of thy kingdom of truth and justice. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless, O Lord, the work of this college named for Peter, the rock on which you build your church. Grant that we, following in the footsteps of our founder and forebears, may find and honour here a passion for truth, a willingness to serve, a readiness to give, and a humility to offer ourselves in love for you and for the world for which Christ died. We ask this for your honour and glory, and to the good of your church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine on you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those you love, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>